Pokemon Diamond was the first Pokemon game I ever played, so I wanted to do a challenge run in it since before I started this channel. My original plan was to do another Nuzlocke, but this time, I decided to change it up a bit. Another popular challenge in the Pokemon community is a solo run, and the idea is simple. Try and beat the entire game using only a single Pokemon, instead of a team. I thought it would be interesting to have a race, and see how each of the three Pokemon you can choose from at the start of the game, Pertwig, Chimchar, and Piplup, would do in comparison to one another, in their base, unevolved forms. This experiment serves no practical purpose whatsoever, even if a casual player were to run through the game with a single Pokémon, they'd probably evolve it and allow themselves to use bag items, but it seemed like it'd be fun to find out, so I did it. Let's briefly go over the rules. It shouldn't take too long, but if you want to skip, there should be a timestamp on screen now. Obviously, the primary rule is that in each run, only the starter, in its base form, no evolution, may be used in battle. Other Pokémon may be used only for HMs. Now, there will be scenarios like, there's a double battle in an area where I'm forced to have HM users with me, or my starter goes down in battle, but then the opponent goes down to weather or a status condition before they're able to get through my HM users, and there's not really a whole lot I can do about that, so I do have to make exceptions for certain scenarios like those. If the latter happened in a boss fight, I'd probably reset, but against some random trainer, I didn't think it was that big a deal. The only other main rules are a ban on bag items during battle, so no potions, no X items, etc., and a restriction on soft resetting. It's allowed, but a time penalty will be issued every time it's used, with the amount of time added depending on the amount of time that was saved by resetting the game. My original plan was to not allow soft resetting at all, but I found that was making the recording experience a bit too miserable for me. With that being said, let's see how Turchwig, Chimchar, and Piplup all did with these restrictions, and if you want, comment below who you think is gonna win. Like every game in the series, Pokemon Diamond begins with a gauntlet of low-level trainers who are more designed to teach you the basic mechanics of the game than to really challenge you. You'd think in the very beginning the game would go smoothly for all three racers, but you'd be wrong. Youngster Tristan, the very first trainer in the game, proved to be something of a roadblock. For a reason I'll explain shortly, all three starters had a very low physical attack stat, and, of course, all three start with only a single, very weak, damaging move, which happens to be physical. The fact that Tristan Starly knows Growl, a move that lowers the target's physical attack stat, definitely does not help. Perchwig is the only one who manages to defeat Tristan on their first attempt, so he takes the first real lead of the race. In this game, the first destination after the player is given free reign is Jubliff City, Jubliff, Jublife, I've been playing this game for 15 years, and I actually have no idea. But anyway, their first destination is that city, where a rather interesting item can be found for a challenge like this. By defeating a pair of optional trainers, the player can get a TM for the move Hidden Power, a move which can be nearly any type and can have any power between 30 and 70, and it should be completely random for each Pokémon. I was going to have a segment here about how this item could really make or break the early game for certain Pokémon partaking in this challenge, and have a dramatic reveal of what type of hidden power each starter got, however, I screwed up. When setting up this challenge, I set my save state on the starter selection screen, and apparently at that point, the personality values of whichever Pokémon you pick have already been generated. So, all three racers had the exact same IVs, exact same nature, and all three had an Electric-type HP with a power of 57. Oops. Well, never mind. Back to the race. Unfortunately for Turtwig, it's already starting to have to deal with two problems that are likely going to be an issue for it for the entire race. Turtwig is very slow, and is also easily the starter most hurt by having poor physical attack IVs. Chimchar and Piplup are both able to function as special attackers, and after a few levels begin to outspeed most of the competition. While Turtwig tends to have to take an extra hit at the start of every round, and often isn't able to one-shot its opponents like the other two can. As such, his lead does not last for very long, and by the time all three of them have defeated the first boss of the game, the rival battle just outside Jubleff City, he's in dead last. All hope may not be lost for the turtle, however. Chimchar is just about to hit a major roadblock, and this one is nothing like the last one. If Youngster Tristan was a single traffic cone, the next boss fight, Orber City's Gym Leader Rourke, is an 85 car pileup. He specializes in rock types, and while grass types like Turchwig and water types like Piplup can breeze through with very little trouble, fire types like Chimchar simply have no way of dealing with them this early in the game. 
Piplup becomes the first competitor to earn a gym badge, with Turchwig following around 10 minutes later. Jimchar... well, he's probably gonna be here a while. After nearly an hour of grinding up levels and repeatedly attempting the battle, Chimchar finally manages to defeat Roar. By this time, Turchwig and Piplup have already returned to Jubilee City, teamed up with Dawn to defeat the Galactic Grunts, traveled north to Floroma Town, battled their way through Valley Windworks, and defeated the next boss, Commander Mars. Looks like Chimchar has a lot of ground to make up. During this time, Piplup continued to slowly pull ahead of Turchwig, but unfortunately for the Penguin, this time it was his turn to hit a roadblock. Once they made their way through Eterna Forest and arrived in the city, it was time to face the second gym leader, Gardenia, and she specializes in grass types. This roadblock might actually be worse for Piplup than Rourke was for Chimchar, because Gardenia's Pokémon have better moves, and one of them, her Roserade, is fully evolved, meaning it can hit harder and take hits easier. Turchwig doesn't have too much trouble. Bite does decent damage, and they can't do much to him in return. It's much more difficult for Piplup. While Peck also does decent damage, their moves do serious damage in return, many of them outright one-shot. Not much Piplup can do for now except grind. Meanwhile, despite having a type disadvantage against many of the Pokémon inside, Perchwig manages to get through the Galactic Building and Eterna relatively smoothly and defeat the next villainous boss, Commander Jupiter. While Turchwig isn't able to move forward with as much speed as the other two, it has easily been the most consistent so far. And maybe this massive early lead will be what it needs to come out on top. What? How is that possible? Chimchar was so far behind. How is he now entering the Galactic Building in Eterna City only a few minutes behind Turchwig? One of the biggest reasons is that Chimchar learns a move called Nasty Plot, a setup move which sharply raises its special attack stat. Setup moves like Nasty Plot are absolutely broken in the single player of Pokémon. It's why some difficulty ROM hacks simply don't give the player access to them. That move, as well as Chimchar's typing, allowed him to make quick work of Commander Mars, the bug and grass types of Eterna Forest, Gym Leader Gardenia, and Commander Jupiter, and the result is that, once again, Turchwig is only able to hold on to the lead for a few minutes before losing it to Chimchar. For a while, Turchwig does manage to keep it relatively close. The road to the next gym constantly has rainy weather in the overworld, which slows Chimchar down by weakening its fire-type moves. However, when they both face Maylene in Veilstone City, Chimchar manages to get through quite easily in only an attempt or two, while for Turchwig, the battle proves to be so difficult that it seems like the better option is to simply give up on the gym for now and come back for it later which means he will have to spend time backtracking and delay his access to Fly, the HM move that allows fast travel. Not only that, Turchwig's slowness and its inability to hit hard are causing another issue for it, that being that, quite often, its best option for defeating an opponent is simply stalling them to death. When it can't defeat them in speed and raw damage output, it has to rely on strategies that whittle down the opponent's health while restoring its own, a strategy that is very slow even when it works. This puts Chimchar in a pretty significant lead. Shortly afterwards, back in Eterna City, Piplup has finally managed to defeat Gardenia, and despite the delay, he might not have as much ground to make up as it may appear. Piplup may not have any setup options like the other two do, but he has far better attacking moves than Chimchar and far better attacking stats than Turchwig. Conversely to Chimchar, he is only helped by the Rain Root, and conversely to Turchwig, Maylene is quite easy for him, and in less than an hour, Piplup has pretty much caught up with his Grass-type rival, with each earning their fourth gym badge only around a minute apart from one another. But wait, where's Chimchar? When we last saw him, he was heading down to Pastoria City in order to face Wait, who specializes in water types. Surely that would have slowed him down a bit. You would think, but no. The Electric-type Hidden Power and the Grass Knot TM he got for defeating Gardenia did some pretty heavy lifting there. In actuality, Chimchar is all the way over in Kanalev City, and has just earned his sixth gym badge. This monkey is on a roll right now, and with the next gym leader being an Ice-type specialist, I don't think there's any reason to believe he'll be slowing down. If anyone's gonna catch this guy, it won't be for quite a while. Tragically for Grass-type turtle fans everywhere, Turchwig once again gets left in the dust, when Piplup is able to breeze through the 5th gym, and Turchwig… isn't. 
It takes nearly an hour of trial and error for Turchwig to finally pull through, and by the time he does, Piplup has earned its sixth badge in Kenelev City and defeated the next two villainous bosses, Commander Saturn and a rematch with Commander Mars, while Chimchar has earned its seventh badge in Snowpoint City and has just about completed the villain plotline. And this starts off what is easily the least eventful section of the entire race, because the three competitors remain in the positions they're in for quite a long time with Piplup about an hour ahead of Turchwig, and Chimchar in a wide and still gradually widening lead over Piplup. The next major obstacle doesn't come until the three of them are facing the final gauntlet at the end of the villain plot. Chimchar gets through with no issues, because of course he does. Piplup has some trouble. The multi-battle with the rival, Mars and Jupiter isn't an issue, but Cyrus definitely takes a decent amount of grinding and trial and error. As for Turchwig, well, let's just say that this was the battle that eventually made me decide to allow soft resetting. I don't want to speak too preemptively, but Perchwig was already quite far behind the other two, and is now stuck behind what looks to be one of the most impassable roadblocks of the entire race. I think it's safe to say that he's probably out of the running by now. In fact, the race in general is starting to look pretty over. Chimchar's lead over Piplup is still growing, with him defeating the last gym leader, Voltner, and making it to the Elite Four while Piplup was still trying to get through the galactic boss Cyrus. And his streak doesn't end there. Aaron of the Elite Four proves to be no problem. Bertha of the Elite Four proves to be no problem. Flint of the Elite Four proves to be no problem. Lucian of the Elite Four proves to be... a bit more difficult, actually. He does cost Chimchar some time via reset penalties, but he's doable. Champion Cynthia's first three Pokémon proved to be no problem, but then... Um. And that's a one-shot for sure. Oh dear. Chimchar is outsped and one-shot by Cynthia's Garchomp. That's not good. Chimchar takes several more shots at Cynthia, hoping for her Garchomp to use a different move, maybe Brick Break, which Chimchar might have a chance at surviving, or Dragon Rush, which can miss. I had seen the AI make plenty of less than ideal choices in the move selection before this point, but she just seemed to go for Earthquake every time. Even worse, some damage calculation proved that even if Chimchar maxed out its special attack with Nasty Plot and was in Blaze, an ability Chimchar has that powers up Fire-type moves when it's low on health, it still wouldn't be able to one-shot Cynthia's Garchomp even if it did get a chance to attack. As tragic as it was, he was looking really close to having a sub-10-hour time, Chimchar's streak has been stopped dead in its tracks, and all he could do for now was drop out of the Elite Four and grind some more levels. A little while later, Chimchar is ready to try again. At this level, it should be able to outspeed Cynthia's Garchomp and one-shot it, providing, of course, that it maxes out its special attack and activates Blaze. The first three members of the Elite Four, of course, aren't any problem, and now even Lucian is very consistent. He's back at Cynthia. He takes down her Spiritomb. He takes down her Gastrodon. He takes down her Milotic. And now, here's the Decider. Aw, oh, no! I forgot to take Garchomp's nature into account when figuring out its speed stat. It's actually still quite a bit faster than Chimchar. Chimchar would have to go past level 90 to be able to outspeed it. You may have noticed that time, though. Her Garchomp didn't use Earthquake. I found that the AI seems to be a lot more likely to use a random move instead of the ideal one when your Pokémon's health is low, which means that the previous strategy of relying on a Dragon Rush miss now actually looks viable. So, does Chimchar go for that? Or does he spend yet more time grinding levels? If he relies on a Dragon Rush miss, he could win on his next attempt, but he could also wind up accumulating a lot more penalty time if he gets unlucky. If he drops out and grinds some more, that would be a lot more consistent, but it would definitely take quite a while. It's a difficult choice, and just to make things even more difficult... <laughs> Yep, thanks to the time spent grinding, as well as the penalty time that Chimchar has already accumulated, Piplup is catching up. Partially from pressure, and partially from impatience, Chimchar decides to go for the luck-dependent route.
Chimchar just does not seem to be getting the luck it needs. Garchomp lands the 75% accurate move seven times in a row, and that's not even counting the attempts where it went for some other move instead, before finally... Her two other Pokémon, Lucario and Roserade, proved to be no trouble whatsoever. Hiplup, meanwhile, being a higher level, has comparatively very little trouble with Cynthia. He nearly defeats her on his first attempt, and probably would have been able to if I'd outpredicted the AI a bit better. When they both finish, while Chimchar's time may look quite a bit better, he reset around 20 times against Cynthia alone, more than twice the amount of times Piplup reset over the entire game. We'll just have to see how they compare to each other after penalty time has been calculated. So let's... Oh, wait, right, there was a third competitor in this race. Kerchwig has spent pretty much this entire time stuck at Cyrus atop Mount Coronet, finally managing to beat him only shortly before both of the other two were finished with the entire game. When Turchwig continues to have trouble even against Volkner, a gym leader he has a type advantage against, I begin to question if it's even going to be able to finish the run. And you know what? If the AI in this game were better, it actually wouldn't be. There were several Pokémon in the Elite Four that easily could have outsped in one shot even a level 100 Turchwig should they decide to use the right move. For Aaron's entire team, yes, even his Dustox and Beautifly, Flint's Rapidash and Infernape, and Cynthia's Roserade, Milotic, and Lucario, Kerchwig had to rely entirely on the AI making stupid decisions. Cynthia took 52 attempts, and I'm quite certain that was well under odds as well. But finally, all three competitors have finished the race. Now, while the credits roll, it's time to see who comes out on top after reset penalties have been taken into account. I don't know about you, but my money's on Kerchwig. Turchwig had a game time of 30 hours, 8 minutes, and 6 seconds. He reset twice before Cyrus, saving a little under an hour. He reset 9 times before Flint, saving a total of nearly 2.5 hours. He reset 7 times before Lucian, saving over 3 hours. And he reset 52 times before Cynthia, saving around a day and a half, for a total of 41 hours, 18 minutes, and 4 seconds of penalty time and a total time of 71 hours, 26 minutes, and 10 seconds. So, not great. Chimchar had a game time of 12 hours, 43 minutes, and 58 seconds. He reset 9 times before Lucian, saving around 3 hours, and he reset 24 times before Cynthia, saving around 11 hours, for a total of 14 hours, 36 minutes, and 52 seconds of penalty time, and a total time of 27 hours, 20 minutes, and 50 seconds. Finally, there's Piplup. He had a game time of 19 hours, 8 minutes, and 8 seconds, so much higher than Chimchar's. However, he only reset once before Candice, saving around 9 minutes, 3 times before Lucian, saving around an hour, and 4 times before Cynthia, saving around an hour and a half, meaning Piplup only has 2 hours, 37 minutes, and 40 seconds of penalty time, and a total time of 21 hours, 45 minutes, and 40 seconds, which makes Piplup the winner. Now, I do want to add a disclaimer here, and I promise I'm not just coping because my personal favorite starter lost by a major upset at the very end. I just have to say that this video isn't really an objective measure of which starter is best for doing this challenge with. I mean, I think we can safely say that it's not Turchwig, even accounting for the poor attack IV, but between Chimchar and Piplup, it really could have gone either way, and a lot of it hinged on human error and luck. If Chimchar had gotten the luck he needed against Cynthia's Garchomp sooner, or if, well before that, he'd spent his time more wisely by grinding instead of resetting in the Elite Four when it should have been clear that it just wasn't plausible at his current level, he easily could have won. There's also the fact that I'm just one person, so I had to do these three runs myself one after the other. I don't believe it's a complete coincidence that the winner happened to be the third run that I did as both consciously and subconsciously I probably learned from the mistakes of the previous two runs. And just before we end off, I'll be a little nicer to Turchwig. The fact that it was possible for a Turchwig with one of the lowest attack stats it can possibly have to pull through anyway, I suppose that's something for Turchwig fans to be proud of. That's it though. 
My next big video will probably be another entry in my reviewing and ranking series. Be sure to subscribe and leave any thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.